The Mars Express mission is the culmination of a large number of missions run by NASA in particular to the planet Mars. The thing about Mars Express is that it has a very much better camera. It's a stereo camera. It's the first time we've had a properly designed stereo camera looking at another planet. So that means we see not only pictures of the surface, but we can make measurements. We can produce maps. We know how high a mountain is. We know how deep a valley is. So we could produce an ordnance survey map of the planet Mars. Now, this isn't a mapping camera with film on it. This is a digital camera. So the part that we've been involved in is helping to design the camera and helping to do the processing of the camera data on the ground. We don't have landmarks on Mars in the same way that we have on the Earth. There's been no surveyors there, at least not so far as we know it. So we have to be able to create reference information about the surface. We have to know where we are. What we want to do in the longer term is to develop the technology to be able to automatically land either robotic or vehicles with humans in them. To do that, we need to be able to create our own landmarks and computers. What has particularly interested us from the very earliest images that we got is the presence of large amounts of ice and water. Um, we can see where it's been flowing. We can see where it's been collected. Um, in particular, very soon after the mission began, we found this huge area, which is clearly a, a frozen sea, very close to the equator. It's about five degrees north of the equator. The water that formed the sea has come from deep beneath the surface of Mars, and we now believe that life could have developed beneath the surface of Mars. Um, and hopefully, if we can land there, we might be able to find traces of life. We've now got the technology to do 3D virtual field geology. We don't have to wait 20 plus years for people to go to the surface. We can show them what the surface actually looks like. Rovers are all very well, but they're only going to cover a tiny fraction of the surface of Mars. What we can see here is anywhere on the surface of Mars. If we find life, then that will tend to indicate that life is quite a common thing in the universe. It's, if it's found on two planets in the solar system, then we can essentially say that life is in most places where it can develop. On the other hand, if we don't find it, we have to ask ourselves why, why we haven't found this, and why is life on Earth so unique? And I think both those two things are, are very interesting questions, really, which interest everybody.